everyone and welcome back to my channel or if you're new here hi there I hope you will enjoy this video and uh, I am trying out a new type of uh, filming format and I hope you will enjoy it this is a more of a relaxed little thing that I'm going to do and you can jo join in and do one of your own also we are going to make an abstract type of galaxy painting and for that we're going to use watercolor paper I am just using this Stratmore 300 series cold press it has texture on it and I already taped it down to my little board and I am going to use these type of brushes just a mop one to take up a load of water and uh, a size 12 from art master to uh, that can keep more colors and then I am just using my little Rembrandt size 6 brush I enjoy this one a lot <laughs> and then we're also going to use some rubbing alcohol I just put it in some airtight little boxes and then we are using table and sea salt and why I have both I'm going to show you in my little sketchbook because uh, depending on the size of salt you will get different results and here I have just swatched to see some examples this is watercolor with normal table salt this is ink with uh, table salt and there's watercolor with sea salt and uh, ink with sea salt and uh, and then ink with crystallized salt and then watercolors with crystallized salt and that is just it's an experiment I did on my own <coughs> to get crystallized salt anyway besides that we're also using different types of uh, different colors of ink you can use uh, yourself whatever ink you want. Oops, God, I am so sorry about that. <coughs> I am mainly using Windsor and Newton ink, and this one by Kuretake is a new one that I'm going to try out <laughs> that I just picked up recently from eBay. Just for the old eBay. But anyway, we'll return in a moment and we'll start painting. So now we're just going to start wetting our paper. Just to keep it moist. Be careful so you don't use too much water or you'll create little puddles and then it will take ages for it to dry. I am a really good expert in creating puddles. And yes, I curse every time, but sometimes it's it can actually give a cool little effect. The flaw with it is that it takes a lot longer for the paper to dry so you can't work on it that much since you have to do some parts of this after it's all dried. But anyway, now we're going to start with a color and I'm just I'm just picking something up, whatever that I feel like. something else again and then I am going to use my little spray bottle it's going to blend a bit differently some stuff was also starting to get it a little bit dry and we don't want it to dry too fast because then we come to Texture you want with salt. And we're 
probably going to do this with two layers so after we've done this and it's dry we are going to add another layer of color but we'll get into that when we're done with this Again, you don't even have to variate your colors or whatever. You can use how many colors you want or how little color you want. But if you choose to use one color, I recommend you to use different shades of it. Also, it depends on if you choose to do it on cold pressed or hot pressed. This is cold press and it has more of a texture to it. It also creates different types of effect as you can see. You probably can see it, you should be able to see it in this video format. But uh, the paint is bleeding differently into the uh, textured cracks on the paper which can actually be really freaking cool but I think so <laughs> Speaking of puddles, we have one there already. <laughs> work on beer format but it's a little harder format of the paper <laughs> what I mean it's a bit harder because then you have to really make sure your stuff keeps wet because if the pigments of your watercolors are already drying before you start applying the ink it's gonna be a bit of a different Effect and also the salt is gonna do shit. <laughs> this 
see we start to dance around and you see that uh, ink is uh, bleeding around into the cracks of the texture of the paper. I really enjoy that effect, it's, it's really cool. And at the end of the, this video I'm also going to go through um, all the different types of uh, previous galaxy paintings I've done. You can see how much of a variation you can get. Yeah, I'm going to call it quits on that. And now I'm going to use some rubbing alcohol with a, with a shitty brush. Well, shitty brush, not low quality brush you shouldn't use. A high quality brush with rubbing alcohol, you can ruin them completely. As the rubbing alcohol have a tendency of uh, eating away the glue which holds uh, the hair of the brush together. Woo, I don't think I've been talking so much before in my life in a video. Or have I? <laughs> I tend to freaking forget sometimes. And what the rubbing alcohol does is that it pushes away the pigment. You can put, put it directly down on ink even. As you can see for a moment it starts to move around. It pushes them away. It spreads. You can get some really cool, like star like effects. And at last, I'm just gonna even do this. Bleed just some over time. Now I'm gonna let use that too much because it might interfere with the salt it has done that before depending on what watercolor you use, but yeah, you just grab salt, like table salt, and you just spread it around however you want. Don't pile it up though, because that just, that just won't. Yeah, but you can pile it up if you want to see what it does, but I recommend you to do that then in a, on a piece of scrap paper or sketchbooks where you experiment with stuff. Yeah, now I'm taking out the sea salt, and then we're going to wait for it to dry. So. And then we'll be back when this is dry and we're going to paint a second layer of this and I'll explain some stuff on that too. Okay, so uh, it is dry now and I already taken the freedom of removing the salt. Uh, this is currently how it looks like. But yeah, we are going to add a second layer and for that I'm just going to use a, a blackish color mixed with some ultramarine blue. And uh, with it we're also going to use table salt. That is the only thing we're using now, but if you want to go ahead and experiment and try other things to layer up, besides another layer of watercolor, go ahead after we've done this we're gonna wait for that layer to dry and then we are going to be messy and make stars and i'm 
getting my surface just a little bit moist. And then I'm going to be selective and choose certain areas to dump this on. Why I'm choosing to then put another layer of, of paint with table salt is because the table salt is going to absorb the pigment of this layer and make it shine through. Uh, the, the first layer shine through, <laughs> sorry. <clears throat> and it can look really cool. And actually, I find this stuff really fun. Is if you're on an art block or well, you have different types of art block. Sometimes you want to draw and play around with your materials, and sometimes you don't know what to draw. So then this type of stuff comes in handy. Actually, <laughs> I find anyway. Same with liquid pouring on the acrylic. <laughs> that can really lock up an art lock, I find. But yeah, I am happy enough with that layer, so I'm just gonna spread some little table salt here and there. And I actually dropped a fist of fist up. All over. <laughs> all over my desk. So now we're going to wait for this to dry. And since it's salt, we cannot use a hair dryer. Just just as a tip, it won't work then. <laughs> but anyway, we will be back after this is dry, and then we are going to splash some paint. <laughs> Okay, so we are back and our last layer of watercolor has dried and it and the salt also created a bit of a, an effect on it. Not as I wanted because I, I used the wrong color in on the second layer. Normally, normally I use my Rembrandt uh, watercolors, but yeah, I forget, forgot and I accidentally took our Tessa on the second layer and I noticed that our Tessa doesn't work that well with salt. The salt doesn't absorb the pigment in the same way as some other colors. Rembrandt works great which is from Royal Talents, that's a Dutch brand, which is uh, very common here in Europe. Uh, but anyway, <coughs> now we're gonna have some fun. Oh well, messy. Uh, put some protection on your clothes if you're scared of that or whatever <coughs> This is gonna be messy and uh, What I'm using to make the stars is just a white ink diluted in some water. I have it sealed off like this cuz It's easier for me. <laughs> I find <laughs> But anyway this ink dilute white ink diluted in water and uh, when the white ink is diluted in water, it will also work like watercolor. So when it stains, for example, on this red one, it, it will fade and be a little bit pinkish or whatever color you're using. So we're going to do this in two parts, kind of, with diluted water, with, with ink diluted in water, and then just normal ink for the brightest highlights. But yeah, I'm doing this. <laughs> I'm just gonna do this also because I can see that happening already. I am a messy one. So you tap your brush there, and what you what I like to do now is that I just like to really fast even. You can do this in different ways, you can use a toothbrush and then you can just... Uh, here's the toothbrush I sometimes use. And then I just dip it in the paint and do that, but I am not after that effect this time. So that's why I do it like this. 
You can also do this in an acrylic solubility marker. It doesn't have to be ink. Spray a little bit more there, and when I when I'm do bigger chunks, I take a little bit more paint, well ink on the brush, more pigment. So, we'll put that to the side for a moment. <coughs> What you can do now is you can put it aside to dry or you can use a hair dryer. I'm going to use a hair dryer so it will go a lot faster. That will not affect anything at all in the ink. So we'll be right back and then we'll apply the last stars. And it has dried. So now I'm just going to take the concentrated ink. fly off like so and I'm just going to do the same. These are some of the stars that are going to be more white, uh, more opaque white. I'm going to take a little bit more. So I want some more bigger chunks in there. And again, I am using just some cheap brushes for this. Not hard quality stuff, because this type of material can use high quality watercolor brushes at some point. But yeah, I admit it sometimes I use my expensive brushes for it too. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> That's life. get back to it when it's completely dry and we'll peel off this and then I'll go through some other examples I made previously so see you in a bit and all dry and now we're just going to remove the tape There we go. And uh, if you guys uh, also did some of this, uh, uh, I would love to see your work. And uh, if you post it on Instagram or on Twitter, um, I haven't thought it up yet, but I will when this video is posted and I'll put a hashtag down in the description box below. And you can use that hashtag and then I can see what you made. Because this is so this is so different, you can get all types of results. Because you can you are so free. You really like creative freedom and you can get your juices flowing flowing. 
And this is also a different one that I made. And this is one of my favorite ones that I managed to create. I'll pop them up on the screen in... <laughs> Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll, uh, I'll scroll them up in the screen for you so you can see more details. But yeah, thank you so much for joining me. If you like this video, please give it a like. And if you would uh, like to see more of my content in the future, hit that subscribe button. And if you'd like to get notified when I release a new video, then just click the bell icon next to the subscribe button. <laughs> Again, thank you so much for watching. Uh, let me know what you think about this video format and if you want me to go to do more of these type of videos. Yeah, thank you so much for watching again. And I see you in the next one. Bye bye!